Voi. We have another question. Um, yeah. The question is like this. We read in Jeremiah 31, 31, that the new covenant is made with the house of Israel, with the followers of Abraham. Galatians 3.16 and Galatians 3.28-29 seem to say that we believers from among the nations are heirs of these promises because we are the seed of Abraham through Christ. And the question is this, are all believers, I think the New Testament believers, are they in a covenant that was made by God with Abraham? If this is an unbiblical understanding, what practical implications or where can this doctrine lead if we hold this understanding? Uh, the question is, is the church in a covenant relationship with God presently? This is the question. And if this is an understanding? No. <laughs> Again, a difficult question. Yeah, it's not uh, easy. It's not easy, but this is, um, but let's I, say, relevant I, for us today. It is relevant. Yes, it is. Yeah. Please. Now, a, a covenant is a kind of contract you make. There is the old covenant, like a, co uh, like a contract between God and Israel. Israel had some obligations. And they broke the covenant, the contract. Then God promised them, I will make a new covenant with you. To promise to them. Yes, he promised to Israel, yeah. I will make a new covenant with you. Do that is a one-sided covenant. God made some obligations, but he did not put anything on the people of Israel. No. Now, in Jeremiah... 31, 31, it clearly says, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Now let us turn to Hebrews chapter 8. And this is confirmed in Hebrews 8, verse 10, where it says, because this is the covenant I will make to the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. Ben. Can you imagine that God makes a contract with us, his children? We make contracts with our business partners. But I would never make a contract, a covenant with my child. So the new covenant is for Israel. And God will make this covenant valuable in the uh, millennium to come. Yeah. Now, what do we have to do with the new covenant? If the covenant is not made with the church, what have we to do with that covenant? That Nothing? Question mark? Yeah. The blood of Christ that he shed is the blood of the new covenant. See. Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 calls himself a minister of the new covenant. Well. Now there is a certain relation that we have to the new covenant. Hey. And the relation is this. She. The blessings that the new covenant is promising to Israel, the blessing is already valid for us now. If you compare Jeremiah 31 with Hebrews chapter 8, you will realize there are four main blessings in the new covenant. The first blessing is the law will be put in their heart or mind. The second is there is a full relationship to God. Uh, Hebrews 8 verse 10, I will be to them for God and they shall be to me for people. Uh, Third blessing is full knowledge of God. Uh, verse 11, they will say know the Lord because 
all shall know me in themselves. And the fourth blessing is full forgiveness. Verse 12, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawlessnesses. I will never remember any more. Now, these will be four blessings of the new covenant for Israel in the millennium. But we already have anticipated these four blessings. The law of God is in our heart. We have been born again. We know God much more than Israel will ever know him. And we already have full forgiveness. So, very briefly, the new covenant will be made with Israel, but the blessings of this new covenant are already blessings that we can enjoy day by day.